Today I am making raw food for the cats. I was in Trader Joe's yesterday and I bought a bunch of chicken parts. This is their all natural chicken. No antibiotics ever. Uh, they don't use hormones. Minimally processed, no artificial ingredients. Right now I'm buying the all natural chicken because it is cheaper than the organic chicken but I feel like the quality is better than the just like regular chicken. So I have four packages of thighs, which total about eight and a half pounds. And I have four packages of drumsticks, which total about eight pounds. So altogether, this is about 16 and a half pounds of meat. When I buy them, I don't look at how much they weigh. I just buy like four packages of each. I also have a bag of chicken hearts and chicken livers. So this is nine ounces of livers, five ounces of hearts. Normally I will put bags together that are eight ounces of each. So it's like a half a pound of chicken hearts, a half a pound of chicken livers. But when I was doing that, this is what was left over, but that's fine. This will be good. I always add additional taurine anyway, just to be sure. And then I have this package of chicken giblets. So Grandma Farrell had a whole chicken and this is what came in the whole chicken. This is like the neck, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, like all that. And uh, what she does is she puts it in her freezer and then she gives it to me to make food for the cat. So this is actually like half a pound of chicken organs. So all total, I have a little bit more than 17 pounds of meat here. It's about 17 and one third pounds of meat. In a medium mixing bowl, I am going to add all of the supplemental ingredients and combine them all together. So right here, I have a cup and a half of pumpkin puree. Sometimes when I make the food, I don't put the pumpkin in. Sometimes I do put the pumpkin in. It's some extra nutrition for the cats. It's high in vitamin A. Um, it's a vegetable fiber for them. For this batch, for 17 pounds of meat, I'm using a cup and a half of puree, which is like a small can, like a 15 ounce can. And to this puree, I'm also going to add about six teaspoons of pure wild Alaskan salmon oil. Salmon oil is really high in omega-3s for the cats. This is a pump bottle, so I usually just do six pumps because one pump is approximately one teaspoon. I actually just did seven pumps of the salmon oil and then I'm just gonna mix it into uh, the pumpkin puree. Basically everything I add to this bowl, I'm just gonna be mixing it in as we go along. The salmon oil smells very fishy. All of a sudden Stella has showed up to rub against my legs as I make this. Um, I'm also adding liquid vitamin E. I usually add one dropper full of this for about 10 pounds of meat. So right now I'll probably add a dropper and a half. The dropper in this bottle is a one milliliter dropper. So I added 1.5 milliliters of liquid vitamin E. I'm also adding two of these B complex capsules. These are high potency B complex, easy to swallow capsules. Um, I don't add the whole capsule. I take the capsule apart and add the powder that's inside of the capsule. And these capsules have all of the B vitamins in them. I only use a few of these capsules because the cats are also getting B vitamins in the natural whole food ingredients that I add. And that's what the B capsules look like. And I am going to stir those in also. I would much rather that the cats got all of their vitamins through whole food ingredients, but just to make sure that nothing is missing, I do add a few of those. Mm. There's Stella. Stella, she smells the fish. I don't let Stella taste any of this because this is meant to be diluted through 17 pounds of meat. So don't let your cats taste your, uh, taste your supplements as you're going along. The next thing I am adding is this kelp powder. This is certified 100% organic Icelandic ocean kelp powder. I'm going to add a little more than one teaspoon of this. I keep a log of the recipes I use when I make the cat food. And last time I made cat food, I had 14 pounds of meat and I used one teaspoon of this. So since there's 17 pounds of meat, I'll probably use like one and a quarter teaspoons of this. The reason I use kelp is because it is a natural source of iodine and calcium and lots of really good minerals for the cats. It also supports a healthy thyroid. 
And this is what the kelp looks like. It's just a green powder. It's almost like dried seaweed that has been made into a powder. I'm also including some detox powder. This is all natural calcium bentonite clay. Uh, it detoxifies, restores, and alkalizes. The reason why I use this is because I noticed this was being used in all of the commercial raw cat food that I was feeding the cats. And when I looked into it, I found out that it had really good detoxifying properties. And in nature, cats often eat bits of dirt and clay and it kind of simulates that. And that's what the clay looks like. It is just kind of like a beige-ish, grayish powder. I'm also going to add a little bit more than a teaspoon of this amazing grass, amazing trio. This is barley grass, wheat grass, and alfalfa. Uh, this has good vitamins and minerals for the cats. This is basically like a dried version of cat grass. All greens are naturally high in vitamin K and they are all naturally alkalizing to the system. And that is what the grass powder looks like. It's just like a green powder. Next I have alfalfa. Alfalfa is a natural source of B vitamins for cats. Alfalfa is like a grass. So in the wild, cats might chew on alfalfa. It is basically like a superfood. It's very alkalizing, it's very nourishing. And this box contains 24 tea bags. So what I do is I take about two tea bags and I cut them open and then I put the dried alfalfa in the food for the cats. And that is what the dried alfalfa looks like. And then, even though raw meat is full of taurine and raw organ meats have even more taurine, I do add a few capsules of taurine. Um, so the last time I made food, I added five capsules of taurine. And I feel like this time... I want to add four capsules of taurine. I don't know why. I don't want to overdo the taurine because it is naturally occurring in the meat, but everyone you talk to definitely recommends putting taurine in the food. So to me, it's just like a backup supplement. Um, it is a water soluble amino acid. So anything that the cats don't utilize, they don't store it in the body, they just pee it out. And that's what the taurine powder looks like. It is just a white powder. So what I'm gonna do now is basically just stir everything together into this pumpkin. And I do have a few more ingredients I will be adding, but those I need to crush up in a blender. So I wanna get this stirred up first. And that's what it looks like when it is all stirred together. I also add some raw pumpkin seeds, freeze-dried raspberries, and freeze-dried blueberries. I do this because in nature, when cats kill a mouse or a bird, for example, they eat the entire animal from tip to tail, including whatever is in that animal's stomach and digestive system. And in the wild, mice and birds would be eating seeds and nuts and berries and that kind of stuff. So cats in the wild do get a little bit of pre-digested vegetable matter. So what I'm gonna do with this is I am going to grind all of this up in a blender so it's a really fun powder. I'm going to use about three tablespoons of the pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are high in minerals. They're also anti-parasitic, so that's great. Raspberries and blueberries are high in vitamins, like vitamin C, for example. They're also high in antioxidants and phytochemicals, and I just like to add a little bit to the cat's food. You never want any kinds of fruits or vegetable matter to make up a large portion of a cat's diet. Cats are obligate carnivores. They have to eat meat to be healthy, and the majority of their diet should always be meat, preferably fresh meat, preferably raw meat, but it's okay to add up to a certain percentage. I think the percentage is like 5% of other non-meat ingredients. When you buy commercial raw food for cats, you'll notice a lot of them include 95% meat products and then 5% vegetable matter. Some even go as high as 15% vegetable matter. I have three tablespoons of raw pumpkin seeds in this magic bullet. I added a little bit more than three tablespoons of freeze-dried blueberries, and I added two heaping tablespoons of freeze-dried raspberries. 
And this is what it looks like after it has gone through the blender. There are a few um, chunky pieces, but that's okay. That's not a problem. And I am going to mix this into the pumpkin mixture. And there we have it. All of the supplements have been mixed together and I am going to put this aside while I grind up the meat. Right now, things are going to start to get messy, so make sure you have an apron on and make sure you have some rubber gloves. So now that I have the supplements all mixed together, the next thing I am going to do is assemble the meat grinder and get it ready for grinding. This is the disc that I like to use. It's the largest disc that I have, and I feel like it cuts up the bones to a good size. Um, it pretty much makes them the size of like a piece of long grain rice. So um, the cats have been happy with that, and uh, so that's what I use. The grinder has been assembled, and I like to use these really large aluminum pans to catch the meat. I also mix up the meat in these pans, and that way I could just dispose of the pan uh, afterward instead of having to scrub down a large pan. I find that works really good. And I get these really large pans at Costco. There is a Costco business center around here, but you could probably get these at any restaurant supply store. The next thing I do is I get a smaller pan. So I have this baking pan, I use this. And what I am going to be doing is opening all of these packages of chicken and rinsing the chicken. I think it's really important to rinse off the chicken. You don't know where the chicken's been. You don't know if it's been you know, falling on a floor or something. I find that rinsing it can help to get off any potentially unwanted surface bacteria. Here is all of that chicken after it has been rinsed off. I am going to take this over to the grinder and start grinding it. I have a few of the drumsticks in the top of the grinder as well as all of the organ meats. So I'll normally put a few drumsticks through first, make sure everything's working okay, then I'll put the organ meats through, and then I'll follow it with that big pan of chicken. And I will grind everything, bones and all. And there we have it, a little bit more than 17 pounds of ground chicken. Now I'm gonna add the supplements, mix everything together, and we'll scoop it out into portions. I just spread the supplements around the top and now I'm going in with my hands, kind of like making a giant meatloaf and I'm gonna mix this all together. This is what it looks like after all of the meat has been mixed together with the supplements. Now I'm gonna get some sheet pans and a little cookie scoop and start scooping this out. I have a sheet pan that I put some parchment paper on top and then I use this cookie scoop and I am going to scoop out the meat mixture into about 1.25 ounce scoops. All of the scoops have been put on trays. It made six trays of scoops and enough scoops for the cats to have dinner today. So it is a total of 209 scoops of homemade cat food. Thank you for watching this Lucky Earls video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.